Hey guys, it's Joe here from Red Phoenix Rises, and today we're going to be covering a video from the Gravel Institute, which bills itself as the left-wing Prager U, and all the cringe that that comes with. So today we'll be talking about capitalism versus freedom. So let's jump right into it. If you're an American, you've probably heard this one before. Capitalism means freedom. I mean, not really. Capitalism is just kind of a consequence of freedom, in that if we are free, we are free to exchange goods and services in a mutually agreed upon manner, uh, without necessarily needing the government to agree to it. With the liberty of the free market, the thinking goes, individuals are empowered to make their own decisions. Sounds good, right? If you buy into this logic, then any alternative with more role for the public seems oppressive and tyrannical. Yeah, when the government tells me what I can and cannot purchase and do with my money, I, I generally do consider that tyrannical. One where other people make all the decisions for you. Appealing in theory. In practice, not true. Oh boy, she's going to tell me that if I want to eat, I'm going to have to work. And I understand exactly how oppressive that is. Our economy isn't about freedom at all. Just the opposite. American capitalism today is defined by an overwhelming lack of freedom for the vast majority of people, and incredible dictatorial power for a few people at the very top. Hail the Waltons. Hail our people. Oh wait, sorry. Uh, they're not actually dictators, are they? Hmm. That's because we have allowed big corporate monopolies to take over a lot of the work of government and replace public institutions with private for-profit ones. Those private for-profit ones seem to work a little bit better. I remember the last time I was stuck in the mandatory Walmart line and spent three hours waiting there to get my mandatory Walmart ID. Oh wait, that was a public institution. They have gobbled up small and medium-sized businesses so they can set all the terms. You hear a lot about the freedom to choose, but what does that freedom really mean? Sure, we can choose between different eyeglass companies until we learn they are all owned by the same company behind the scenes. And that's the beauty of the free market. Figure out how to make eyeglasses better than they can and then start your own business. I mean, obviously, that's not very easy to do, but if there was so much room in this market for additional competitors, then... It should be very easy to get a loan, and you should have no problem becoming a massive business in no time. Or this could be what's called a natural monopoly, where there just really isn't room or need in the market for a competitor in this particular space, and so a monopoly forms. Or who knows, maybe the government is propping up this monopoly. That tends to happen a lot. We can choose between Budweiser, Skoll, or Beck's Beer, but they're all owned by the same company too. There are way more than three kinds of beer in America. But what's your alternative here? Because you seem to be pointing out that there are uh, monopolies or duopolies and things such as this in most market industries, which of course there are. Uh, and then you're saying, what, that we should replace monopolies and duopolies with government-mandated monopolies, where the government it is the monopoly? Because you're not really providing an alternative here. And when it comes to work, where most people spend most of their time, people don't have much freedom at all. Despite claims that workers freely enter into a contract to sell their labor, there's no free choice between working and not working. Okay, so again, what's the alternative? Even the mortal enemies of capitalism, communists, say that people would have to work. Arguably, communism is about working. So what system are you proposing where people have the choice between working and not working? In a country like ours, where 40% of people can't scrape together $400 in an emergency, the reality is that you either work or you starve. And again, your alternative, please. You don't have several months to take time off and carefully choose a good employer. In order to survive, people submit to working menial, unrewarding jobs for little pay, no security, and bad benefits. And then you apply for better jobs on the weekend, or on your days off, or after work, or before work, or on your lunch break. Because yes, working is actually important, and you're going to have to do it. But at least under this system, you get the choice over whether you want to do that. Under most alternatives, you're simply assigned a job. 
Is that better? And once they're on the job, that lack of freedom only gets worse. When we go to work, we check our hard-won rights at the door, and your employers rule over you night and day. Big corporations like Amazon punish workers for speaking out. Many corporations are now spying on workers' political activities. They intrude into people's private lives, monitor their social media, and regulate their breaks. Well, you think that's bad. Ford used to have people drive around people's houses after hours and on weekends and make sure that they weren't gambling. But more importantly, what is your alternative? Because again, you're not proposing one, and the things you're complaining about are largely consequences of a particularly Keynesian interpretation of economics, which leaves socialism and or communism, in which case you go to the gulag for your political activities instead of losing your job. I'm not trying to say what these employers are doing is right, but ultimately they have a lot less power over you than, say, the government does. An employer can take away your livelihood. A government can take away your life. In poultry plants across the country, workers are penalized for simply using the bathroom to the point that they wear adult diapers and avoid drinking water so as to keep working. So I've read the report on this, and basically uh, the workers are not given timely breaks, waiting up to an hour to go to the bathroom, and are given a limit on how long they can be there. That's not even a remotely unfamiliar working condition. At my job, I can go to the bathroom literally any time I want, and it can still take me over an hour to wind up going to the bathroom when I need to. Sometimes, shit just has to get done first. That's not freedom. And when the boss decides to fire you, there's no due process. Like a feudal lord, he can fire and punish workers at will. In practice, American workplaces are like private governments, where the freedoms we associate with democracy don't exist. Why would they? Look, when I go to work, I agree to be there for X number of hours for Y amount of money. And specifically, I'm there to do the task they have assigned to me. So if I'm trying to do something that is not their task, why would I be rewarded and not punished for that? Should we be able to democratically elect a coffee break at work? Or should we just expect to do the work that we've been assigned for the pay that we've agreed to? And again, corporations aren't governments. They can't force you to stay there. Want a coffee break, but your boss won't give you one? Walk out the door and go to Starbucks. You remain completely free to do that. Yeah, there will be consequences. You'll probably lose your job. But your rights haven't just gone out the window. When we clock in, we, we become subjects, not citizens. Without anti-monopoly regulations to restrict their size... We have antitrust laws on the books. Congress went so far and over enforcing those that they've just given up. They actually used to very strictly enforce antitrust laws until they fucked up with Microsoft. They pushed that case way farther than they needed to. And in exchange for that, they haven't pushed anything since. Or labor unions to contest their power over employees. Yeah, I used to have a union and they're terrible. Corporations and their wealthy CEOs have as much power over ordinary people as any government agency, if not more. Yeah, let me know when Jeff Bezos can send the police in to arrest me. Until then, I'm just going to say you're full of shit. Despite the lie that our market is free. Oh no, I definitely wouldn't call our market free. At best, it's free-ish. Thanks, Keynes. Most industries are dominated by a few massive firms. Two corporations control office supplies. Five corporations control food. Two corporations dominate retail. Four corporations control home internet. One corporation dominates books. Instead of free competition, the status quo is monopoly control. The status quo is monopoly, but you were only able to name one monopoly on one subset of one part of one industry. Huge corporations set the terms and manage the economy from their perch at the top of the market, deciding who succeeds and who fails. No, you're absolutely right about that. They do. The thing is, they don't do it with their own power. They do it by bribing the government who has power. So the best bet would be to take away power from the government because, shockingly enough, corporations don't actually have any power of their own. They just have money. And money just buys other people's power. When Facebook decides to promote a political agenda to benefit itself, who can stop them? Do they need to be stopped? When Amazon decides it doesn't like a particular book, 
That book can vanish from the place most everyone buys books. Look, everyone buys books on Amazon because it's convenient. Also because most books are ebooks now and Amazon kind of has that market. Now, if a book for some reason were not available through Amazon and you really wanted that book, you could just go to your local bookstore, which does still exist. When Pfizer decides to raise insulin prices ahead of a shareholders meeting, it's done and people die as a result. Every day, decisions that affect millions of people are made not by everyone in a democratic manner, but by unelected people who have profits and not the well-being of others in mind. Now, why isn't there a generic for insulin? Could it be shitty patent laws? I feel like it might be shitty patent laws. That's the problem at the heart of our system. Elected officials are always expressing concern about government intrusion into our private lives. But they're happy to let corporations take advantage of us in ways that would be unconstitutional for any democratic government. Well, since corporations don't have guns and can't force you to follow their rules, that's irrelevant. Governments are democratized because we have no choice but to live with them. You can completely ignore Amazon. You could never buy anything from them, ever, if you really wanted to. The hard truth is that despite what you hear, the modern American economy is not about the freedom to choose. Again, thanks Keynes. In job markets, where you either get a job or you die. Name an alternative. In workplaces where the boss is king. And yet can't stop you from just leaving. And in marketplaces dominated by huge abusive monopolies. You named one monopoly on one type of product. Kind of. You don't have much of a choice at all. I'm Zephyr Teachout, professor of law at Fordham Law School for the Gravel Institute. So, what do I think of the Gravel Institute? It's PragerU, but worse. Well, PragerU can definitely get into some bullshit. The animation quality is higher. Also, unlike the Gravel Institute, they don't advertise themselves as being just as full of shit as the competition. But it's good because we're on this side now. Like, honestly, at least Breaker U has the decency to lie to me. But that's it for this video. I'll see you all next time.